How is myeloma monitored? So monitoring myeloma can be done through blood tests, through imaging studies, through bone marrow biopsies, and obviously, most importantly, through the clinical exam that we do on a regular basis. A lot of the times, symptoms can tell us before anything else when the disease is flaring up uh, and we need to do a workup for, the, for possible relapse. Whenever somebody has a diagnosis of myeloma, we have the ability to identify what's called a biomarker in the patient's blood or in the patient's urine. And this is a very convenient way of being able to track what the cancer is doing in a patient without actually having to take biopsies every time. And since it's just a blood test, we can do that on a monthly basis. We could do it every three months, as frequently as we want. So whenever somebody has a diagnosis and is currently getting therapy, we check it on a monthly basis. And then once that patient achieves a remission and has established a remission for a long period of time, we can space out the markers to just every three months. And that's how we tend to monitor myeloma. The other thing that we can use for monitoring myeloma that's not a blood test is by imaging studies. So we do either a PET scan or an MRI or a low contrast CT scan of the patient's uh, body so that we can identify where there's tumors, where there's concentrations of active disease or disease that has been treated. And then we can use that as a baseline and then monitor it with subsequent uh, imaging studies during the course of the treatment. So whenever we think somebody has achieved a remission, we can repeat the scans. Or whenever we suspect that somebody might be progressing, we go ahead and analyze a repeat set of scans to see if there's any new lesions that we can identify. Now, bone marrow biopsies are another way of monitoring myeloma. And the bone marrow biopsies is a little bit trickier because it's more invasive. And patients don't like to be biopsied all the time. It's painful, it could be invasive, it can be inconvenient. But we do want to be doing biopsies periodically at, at certain key points during a person's uh, disease course. When we first diagnose it so that we can have a good idea of what cytogenetics it has, its risk categories, the amount of disease that we have in a nice baseline of the tumor. And then at different milestones, when we suspect somebody has achieved a remission, and then once they've achieved a remission, we can subsequently repeat it periodically to make sure that they're still in remission and maintaining that remission. And when we do those tests, especially when we suspect remission, we can do additional studies that evaluate for MRD, which is a more thorough evaluation that can pick up up to one in a million cells for cancer. That's a very sensitive test that we're doing now in patients and can give us more information than just the standard complete remission that we normally are able to evaluate with pathology reports. How does a doctor actually figure this all out? Well, this business about plasma cells making protein, protective proteins, isn't lost when they become malignant. These cells continue to make the protein. The protein is now an abnormal protein because it's all being derived from one population of malignant weeds. And this protein is detectable in the blood and in the urine. And it's actually not the cause of the problem, but what it is, is a surrogate marker for what's going on in your garden, in your bone marrow. Typically, the more myeloma you have, the more protein you make. And it's critical for you to know your protein. You need to know your protein. It's a big deal in your monitoring. These proteins are actually antibody proteins or immunoglobulin proteins, they're proteins. And these proteins are made out of two components, a light chain, and if you don't know light chain, you're at a major disadvantage, you need to know light chain, and a heavy chain. And your physicians use that as indirect measures of the activity of your disease. And they actually use it to determine the depth of your response, your benefit. Now that's an indirect measure. The only direct measure is the bone marrow. So you, you can have two choices. You can get your protein, your heavy chain and your light chain measured every month, or you can have a bone marrow every month. Show of hands. <laughs> because really what we're interested in is how much myeloma is in the bone marrow, but we use the protein measurements as surrogates because the working assumption since the weeds make the protein, that the protein levels over time are a good reflection of how many weeds there are. So if you're killing the weeds, the protein should be dropping. 
if the number of weeds are unchanged, the protein should be stable. And if the disease is progressing, then the protein should rise. So it's very typical that every month or whatever your monitoring interval is, you're having a measurement of your light chains. There are two types, kappa and lambda. You should know which one you have because that involved light chain is a big deal for your provider in terms of what is the activity of the disease. There's also a heavy chain. There are two types typically, G and A, or IgG and IgA. That commonly will also be measured. And, if, and it doesn't matter which you have, you need to know which you've got because it's key to your overall monitoring over time. And there's a third measure that, and they're all good measures where you have a SPEP and what your doctor will say and leave you bewildered, we'll talk about your M spike. And the M spike is just another way of measuring the protein. It's different from the way in which we measure the heavy chain GA or the light chain kappa lambda, but it is a legitimate measure of the activity of the disease. So the protein really isn't the problem. The cancer cells, the weeds are the problem, the protein's a measure of the problem with one exception. In 20% of patients, the protein that's produced gels in the kidney. It's produced in your garden, in your bone marrow, hits your bloodstream, then the blood filters through the kidney and their light chains, protein, but then they gel and they damage the kidney. So 20% of patients with multiple myeloma present because their kidneys are damaged. In three quarters of those, that's completely reversible, but still about 5% of patients, even after effective therapy, have residual kidney damage related to the gelling of the protein. That's the only exception where the protein is the problem. Typically, it's not the problem, it's the marker, it's what we use to determine how you're doing over time, and we use it as a response, and it's relatively simple, because a lot of these things go back to the 60s. If the protein went down 25%, we say it's a minor response, 50%, it's a partial response, 90%, a very good partial response, 100% a complete response, and then there's some nuances in there about what does 100% mean, and ways to actually dive deeper to find out how really deep the response is. But you need to know your myeloma protein. When I do my second opinions, I see a lot of engineers. I don't know what it is about Rochester, Minnesota and engineers, but they come and they bring me an Excel spreadsheet that shows a graph of their protein and what treatments they've had a long time. And I love them because then the next patient brings me 400 pages of useless material that it's very hard for me to sort through. But when I see those protein numbers over time and what the treatments were, it helps me immensely. And believe me, if it helps me, it's gonna end up helping you. So preparing for that opinion, I think is kind of an important thing.